welcome back. You guys, today I wanted to talk about um, why I got a lift with no implants. Uh, there is, I have a lot of um, autoimmune things that have gone on in my life in the past. One of them being um, palmar plantar psoriasis, uh, where I got really thick skin on my hands and on my heels, terrible. It's actually kind of how, um, coincidentally, how I started um, Yomi Oils, but anytime I have like any stressful situation or whatever, um, I tend to have some issues with that will flare up, um, Meniere's disease in my ear, whatever, vertigo, whatever. So I didn't want anything else just because I kind of have my health somewhat in check. I did not want to anything foreign more than I already have um, that my body would react to whatsoever. I didn't even care if I was a ache up. <laughs> it didn't matter to me. And historically, before I had kids and before I gained weight, um, I was a very small cut between like an eight and probably more like a B of my younger years. Um, and probably got the bit, the largest might have been a B cup, and I don't even know if that was a full. So for me, it wasn't like going foreign if I had to go really small. I think the worry that you have when you have a lift without implants is that you're going to be really small. And I don't feel like that. I'm that at all. So um, after lose, after having VSG and after losing weight, um, I lost about 85 pounds. I had tons of skin. So um, I had a reduction, but it was more just a severe lift. They have stages of um, stages or degrees of um, stosis, I think is the correct term, um, where, you know, how far yours hang down is the simplest way for me to say it. And I'm sure mine was the highest grade. If it's grade four, I'll look it up here in a second. Um, I'm sure. Um, because even like, my nipples tucked under. <laughs> it was really bad. So, and like I said, historically, I never had, was it was born with perky at all. So um, anyway, so I made a decision to do it. I didn't care, you know, so much about size or whatever. I just wanted them to do this, okay? Um, and so it just so happens that, you know, you've heard me talk about my uh, physician before. He specializes in lifting without implants. Uh, that's his, that's his thing. And he did a beautiful job. Um, one of the things you worry about, and I always looked at people's work outside of him were, you know, how do they position the nipples? Some of them will have them out this way. Some of that is, um, has to do with genetics and how they hang and whatever. But when they reposition them, you want somebody that doesn't always have them not, I, I wanted them centered. I didn't want them looking out this way at all. And so I watched to make sure that people had, was it even, whatever. Um, and so he did fantastic work. So I I was probably one of the, you, you won't find a whole lot of people that will do lifts without them, without the uh, implants, but I was one of them. So I didn't have a lot of pictures from dolls beforehand. Um, I just know that he, uh, someone he works closely with said that that is his specialty. So concerns about it were, would I lose the fullness? Um, I was okay that they wouldn't be like high profile, like people want or whatever. I just wanted them to be natural, but still be full. Um, and so I actually requested that they be, he said, what do you want? And I said, full C, um, or C, I didn't care if they were B, fine. Um, and actually what I got was a D, which is basically what I was just without the fold of skin. <laughs> so, um, he took out 250 off of each side in skin and most of it was not memory tissue, um, because they try to preserve all your memory tissue and move that up and they just take out the fat and the skin, um, surrounding it. And they try to, to leave as much memory tissue as they can, especially the, the ones that are connected to the nipple to keep it with good blood supply. Um, and so I didn't lose a lot, 250 on one, so a total of 500, um, which is for some people that have significant reductions, that wasn't a whole lot, but they were like on my kneecaps. But as far as size, I feel like I'm exact same as I was before. They just have a beautiful profile lift um, you know, I, I apps, I adore them. Um, one of the things to keep in mind that if you're having like a lift without 
implants is that when they have to do a significant moving of that nipple for me was a lot a long way um when they sew it up you may ha initially have puckering and that's for any of the lifts or the nipple gets kind of oblong this way because the tissues as they move it up pull in different directions you know it might be shorter from here to here and longer on this side or whatever Good surgeons can um, compensate for that, but I think everybody gets a little bit of distortion initially. Mine were really like kind of oblong this way initially and puckered. And then as time has moved on and um, the swelling has gone down or whatever, I notice that they are more and more symmetrical. And I think, you know, we get, we get crazy and like, oh my God, they're not going to be. Yes, they will. Um, but go back and look at your before pictures and tell me whether they're the same because I know mine weren't and most women are not. I had one that was longer, one that was shorter, one that, you know, longer in length, one nipple was big, one was like that. <laughs> it was just all completely off. So, um, you know, naturally in, after nursing four kids or whatever, there were changes, but they just were not symmetrical and I pretty much no, nothing on us is. So you have to kind of temper yourself and calm down, trust the process. First couple of weeks gonna look like Frankenstein. Gonna have a lot of puckering, um, a lot of pain, a lot of swelling. Some things I did to combat that, I used uh, an oil called anti-swell. And um, especially while the tapes were still on, I would just put it on there and kind of massage up into the lymph area, which we have some here, some by our heart, some in the center here, massaging up. I must have passed down also because I had um, some arm lipo, but I would just gently, not pulling, not nothing, gently, but put that on there because it, um, things with lemongrass, ginger, um, arnica will help to diffuse some of that swelling that gives you the pain. And it's good to keep the fluids moving because the congestion can cause other issues and busting the seams or whatever. So you want to, um, and I mean really gently. Now, now that my um, sutures are healed really well and fuse well and look beautiful, I do um, I do a moderate m massaging now with the oils every night, especially when I take off the compression bra, which I'm still wearing. It feels comfortable to me. Um, so I do uh, a little bit more pressure with the oils and really try to pull the fluids either up into my armpit, down into the center, up here and down. And if I feel any where the where the sutures under the skin are getting so, yes, as you heal, you might start to feel just like with tummy tucks, lumps and bumps where they get fibrous tissue. That's normal, it's part of the healing process. I'm gonna do another video to talk about wound healing um, and what happens with wound healing because there's several stages. At first you'll think, this is great, I'm not gonna get any scars or I'm not gonna get any fibrous tissue under the skin. And then some weeks later you have a lot that's just normal it gets better it gets worse it gets better then it gets a little worse can get worse for a lot of people that have expansion of, of scars um, but then it gets better but it takes time and when I say time I mean year two years even some of the healing process where the body is trying to knit together um, with collagen and that keratin some people that doesn't even stop for a year, year and a half, whatever, before it starts to decline. So you want to do all you can, especially with this area, um, to keep it moist and vitamin E and, you know, like I use uh, the Scarby Gone stuff um, around it. Even when I had tapes, I would put it around it to get rid of the bruising and whatever. Um, just giving my skin what it needs to repair itself, but also um, using things that keep that the inflammation down so the body's not overreacting to heal and causing like hypertrophic scars. So, you know, and that is all, I mean, it's something that we don't have control of, but we want to do the best we can for it. Good, um, drinking tons of water, making sure that we're doing other things to keep inflammation down in our bodies, using the right, you know, if they prescribed you some sort of like keto cell or steroid, if you have a history of hypertrophic scar, whatever they want you to do, do it and do it every day. I do it twice a day. Um, I apply oils, I put my gauze on, put everything on. And then now I'm in a place where I can start silicone treatment. Um, I don't have many red, raised areas. Some of you will notice that it'll be the same as your skin color and then it'll around the margins, even when you have good healing, it'll turn pink. That is a normal part of the healing process. Um, but because I'm starting to get that, just to make sure that I calm down and tell my body that 
you know, time out on adding more collagen and more keratin there, um, I'm going to start using the silicone strips in addition. And you can keep those on for a few days at a time. I'll link the ones that I like. Um, I have strips and I also have like a serum that you paint on that dries as silicone. I don't like that one as much because I don't feel like it gives as much coverage and um, protects against the friction of things on the outside like your, your bra and everything. So anyway, so there's things you can do. Your silicone, your oils, drinking water. Um, I took collagen. I took um, things that get, you know, eliminate free radicals. CoQ10 um, is another thing that I took. There are plenty of supplements out there for wound healing. Um, there are drinks for it that are really expensive. But the main thing is your diet, fruits, vegetables, all that kind of stuff. Just making sure that you're taking care of yourself you know, good fats and etc. cetera. Um, so anyway, so I wanted to break up the topic. So from now on, we're going to keep one topic separate. Um, I'll see if I can find a tasteful picture of my lift right now. That's just something that I'm, I reserve for my husband. So, um, you know, so I won't be showing a lot of pictures of that. I will um, post, I'm doing, we're going on vacation soon. So um, I will have some before and after bathing suit pictures because I am trying to lose like another five to 10 in like five weeks. <laughs> um, I can't, you know, it's hard because I, I had fat transfer to my hip, so I don't want that to die. So it would probably be more like five if I, but I'm killing it with the workouts because I want to be able to see some defined abs. And since I had my round two, there's just not a lot of adipose tissue in my stomach, like completely flat. So anyway, so um, I, I absolutely love and think round two is worth it. Um, we'll talk about that on another one, why I think round two is worth it. People get really disappointed, like, why do I have to have round two? Um, I had to because I had to do this separate just because I had so much work done with my skin penis in the first one. Um, but it's worth it, y'all. And as much as you say, I don't want to, four or six months down the road, you're going to be like, I want to run. <laughs> Many people do. So don't be surprised if you do. Um, plus it gives them a chance to go back and if you miss something, you miss a little lipo here or whatever, you know, they can retool that and, and, um, give you a little bit more contour. Like I have the much more curvy feminine shape this round. Um, and he did a fantastic job the first round. You watch some of my old videos, you guys, like, it was pretty mind-blowing. So anyway, so that's what we're, we're going to talk about this time. Um, like I said, uh, some things to remember when you get it done. Do not get in the shower and wash your hair over this because you have incisions and you might have micropore tape on it. Your hair is the most dirty thing on your head. If Even if you're getting a tummy tuck, don't get in the shower and wash your hair. You wash your body. You come out and you spray. If you have micropore tape, I do recommend alcohol. Some people hate it on incisions. I don't like it on um, open incisions or things that don't have tape, but it does dry that tape out and that tape can harbor bacteria. So I did spray with alcohol and put a little um, of the powder, antibacterial powder. I can link that for you. Um, I took a cotton ball and I put it in my belly button to keep it dry and just swooshed it over um, any tapes that I had to keep them nice and dry. And then I took my oils and rolled around, keeping a one inch margin away from the tapes um, so that my body, because essential oils are absorbed by the body so that my body was getting what it need needed to heal quickly. Um, so don't wash your hair, wash your hair in the sink. Um, the other things are, I would stand with my back, especially initially when the first couple of weeks when these are still really healing, those tapes aren't on. I would stand in my back with a handheld and wash myself and try to keep these dry. I even put a towel over the front. I would not get them wet because I didn't want dirt and skin cells and bacteria to get in them. I wanted to protect them as much as I can, especially down here. Raising your arms up. Some people say, don't raise them up at all. Um, my physician said you could raise it up slowly, but your body will tell you where it has tension. So you kind of know. So I tried not to, for the first couple of weeks, raise way high, but I would go really slow or I'd turn in the bed, my whole body, instead of like turning one side, I'd turn all the way over. Um, you know, just doing things that protect that T. The T incision part is the, the place that you really need to watch the most because this area down here at the bottom is what has the most most tension on it. Uh, just like the belly button is this a place that spits stitches a lot. Um, I will do another video where we can talk about spitting stitches. 
um, and how to treat those because I, I have already had a couple of those, which I wasn't surprised. My body hates those sutures. It spits them out. It did the first time, this time. So we'll do another one on how to take care of those. So if you have questions for me, drop them in the comments. Um, like I said, I, um, have no regrets. I have the fullness. The only thing I don't have is like, I won't have like the fullness with people that want like lots of fullness. You know, mine looks more natural, but as you can see, like they're not tiny. They're perfect for my shape. So, all right, you guys have a blessed day until next time.